Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Toronto jazz guitarist, composer, and educator, Dan Pebb. He opened up about his third release coming out on April 9, 2021, called Wrongs. He is an active member of Toronto's jazz and creative music scene, playing with the likes of Dave Young, Terry Clark, Tim Byrne, and so many more. He's got a great story and insights. Enjoy. So it's great to catch up with you. Thanks for taking a minute out. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Sure. So on this latest CD, your third release as a leader, Wrongs, talk to me a little bit about the timing of this. It's coming out during a pandemic. Kind of how do you feel in general about this release? Um, The whole process of this release, I just kind of wanted, I had this music and it was just kind of a rain or shine situation. Uh, I, I just felt compelled to record it. And thankfully, just before the pandemic was declared in Canada, I was thankful enough to receive a recording grant through the Canada Council. So that was kind of an encouragement to go ahead with this recording and just talking to my bandmates uh, during a time when none of us were playing, none of us were really making music. It just seemed like something we could really use in, in terms of being able to create and record. Um, so that, that's what really compelled me to just go ahead and put this out uh, over this year. So you got a great lineup on the album here. It's a great sound. What do you want the listener to get from this ultimately? Basically, I mean, for for this record and with a lot of the tracks and a lot of the titles, a lot you probably get a lot of suggestion from from certain titles and and what they in certain songs and what they mean. Really, I I want it to be open to interpretation for the listener. Like I I don't like to delve too deep into the meanings of songs in that because I feel like that can be open to whatever the listener is thinking and, and how it affects them. So really, uh, when I recorded this music, I was hoping it would connect to um, an audience and some listeners that wouldn't have perhaps listened to my previous recordings because this one is kind of more well-rounded in terms of, I guess, the jazz idiom, so to speak. I, I, try, to, I try not to define it as a jazz record, but I understand it. it has a lot of those qualities. So there's definitely a lot more st- straight ahead playing on this that kind of connects to, or I hope it connects to a different audience while we're still kind of having that freedom to improvise and have these spontaneous composition moments that someone might not hear in say a traditional record or a straight ahead record. So I I guess I'm just hoping to kind of connect to some new people when uh, they're listening to this. Talk to me a little bit about how the seeds of jazz came in for you. How did everything begin? How did you get into music and more specifically jazz? I started playing guitar at a young age, just kind of taking local music lessons. I guess it, I guess it kind of started when I was in high school. I started playing a bunch of different instruments in like the concert band. So I played trumpet and saxophone, and, and that kind of opened my ears to those sounds. They had a jazz band in high school as well. Um, I didn't play guitar in it, but... Uh, I was exposed to that music, and when I decided I kind of wanted to steer in a direction where I was playing music for the rest of my life, the guitar was the definitive instrument I wanted to play on. So it, it, to me, though, with this music and with going into school, it was obvious I had to build some foundation in that style of music. So that's really what compelled me to uh, get immersed in music and in jazz and go forward and um, study at university and study jazz. So what was the first live jazz show you saw that blew you away? Oh, I still remember it. It was, uh, it was in two, it's almost 10 years ago now, which is kind of hard to believe it. uh, I went to, I was living in Hamilton, which is about an hour outside of Toronto where I live now. And we drove in. And so I guess I would have been 17 and, uh, we went to the Rex Hotel, and there was this group from New York playing this drummer, Ari Honig, who was just incredible. He had, he had this guitar player, Gilad Hexelman, playing with him, and, it, and I'd really never heard modern jazz like that before or, or people playing jazz in a scene like New York coming up here and being able to play this music and interpret other songs the way they did. It just it kind of set me on this whole track after that night. I was just like this. This is this is what's happening. Absolutely. So what do you like the best about being a professional musician? What do you look forward to the most each day? 
Uh, well, that's a good that's a good question. Uh, well, nowadays it, it's definitely harder to search for that answer just with uh, the limitations. But uh, I I just like being able to create music, and and I'm uh, every day I'm just thankful I I get to listen records, albums, artists that inspire me. I get to hear stories, whether through sound or through tale of of people that are, are continuing to inspire me and create and, and also hopefully like I being able to create myself and hopefully inspire others in some way. That's kind of what keeps me playing and, and just always looking forward to getting better at something in, in this musical journey. Like like always kind of searching. That's what kind of keeps me uh on the ground I guess and, and still uh I guess grinding away at music and the instrument. When we do return to the stage and I get back in the audience, we all get back in the audience, what do you hope we all realize about the power of music after this long absence away from live music? That physicality is key in creating sound and creating music and that vibrations in, a, in, a, in live music scenarios are far away anything you could get out of a live stream, out of a, out of a, streaming service out of a YouTube video. Like we, I think we're going to find, I, it's my hope that we find that we desperately need live music after this and that, that we don't take it for granted ever again. So everyone has a perception of you, your family, your friends, your fans, but you're living your life. Who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. I think I'm just kind of see myself as a human being who plays the guitar and tries to make music occasionally. Uh, I don't try to think of think about identity too much because, for me, anyways, because I I know who I am, and I I don't try to let those definitive titles outweigh what I do or what I choose to do in in day to day. So yeah, the the older I get, you know, before I used to be like, oh, I'm a musician through and through. Music is my life. But obviously this year, while music hasn't been at the forefront of what I do or what any musician has done, uh, I've, I've just kind of grown to see that I'm a human being first and a musician second. And uh, that's, that's something I always try to remember when being asked, like, who am I or, or what things I value most in life. Right on. Dan, it's great to finally catch up with you. Thank you for the music. Thank you for taking some time out and good luck with not only the album but getting back to the stage. Thank you so much for having me, Joe. Yeah, I look forward to getting back to it once it's safe to do so. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in Toronto, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Dan for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.